Welcome to Four Ways to Dominate This Tax Season webinar. My name is Jesse Wood. I'm our CEO for eFile Cabinet, and I'm very pleased to be starting off our webinar today by introducing you first to a new partnership that we have between eFile Cabinet and Latino Tax Pro. What you get by combining these two solutions is the best in the document management solution combined with the best tax preparation training and continuing education and tax resources to really help you dominate this tax season. eFile Cabinet offers its customers the very best solutions in document organization, automation, and productivity to ensure your business can focus on what it does best, not paperwork. We couldn't be more thrilled to pair our technology with the very best training platform that teaches you how to expand and scale your business in the most efficient way. Jim Harvey, one of our seasoned custom account managers, will introduce you to four amazing ways you can use eFile Cabinet to really dominate this tax season. My name's Jim. I'll be uh, taking you through this webinar, and uh, I'm one of our account managers here at eFile Cabinet, and for the last several years, I have helped onboard um, a large number of our accounting clients just like yourself and so what we're going to share with you today is some ways that you can use our software to help um, help streamline things coming up for this tax season for you so we look forward to uh, working with you so again thank you for taking the time to uh, to uh, learn something new about eFile cabinet again thank you for taking the time to uh, to listen to what we have here to offer at eFile cabinet uh, as an accountant, you know that uh, right around the corner, uh, we've got Thanksgiving coming up here in about a week or so, and then we have Christmas a few weeks after that, and then lo and behold, New Year starts a new tax season. And so we wanted to highlight a few key things that we offer here at eFile Cabinet to help maybe make your transition just a little bit smoother going into the tax year and help you organize your documents in a way that you can have a stellar tax season um, coming up. So where is it? Where do we begin, right? And uh, if you're like a lot of accountants, a lot of uh, tax professionals out there, it's all about communication, especially at the beginning of the year. How are you communicating with your customers? Is it by email? Is it going to be a phone call to them? Is it, or are you picking up the phone, uh, calling that client that you did their uh, their taxes last year to see if they're ready to go again this year? Well, what we have to offer here at eFile Cabinet, we're going to highlight a few things to help you streamline some of that communication in a way that will help you reach out to those clients uh, on, on a mass scale and uh, you know make sure that they have your information in hand so that you're the one that they are calling when it comes time uh, to do their taxes. All right, so first things we want to talk about are mass communication. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, how can eFile Cabinet, a document management um, program, help me with mass communication? Well, first things first, we're more than just a document management uh, solution. Uh, we've got some great things built into the product. And like I said uh, in the intro, we're going to highlight some of those. So first things first is we're going to talk about being able to set up a secure portal for each one of your individual clients. Now, you'll give them access to a location, and uh, in a minute we're gonna show you how to do that, but two, um, by setting this up, it will allow you to drop documents into a location that is then gonna be shared with your with your customer. Now, this begins a two-way street, so now they can send information to you. So as you create you know your your structure you're going to use this and set this up in a way to save yourself some time some energy and uh, a lot of the back and forth stuff that happens during tax time that we're going to hopefully help you alleviate now i was just on the phone today with one of our with one of our accountant accounting customers and we talked about getting this set up for them for this upcoming tax season um, they are uh, they use our Rubik's platform and they have created locations and guest users um, so that they can share information again back and forth with the client again a two-way street and what we talked about today was creating a generic letter for each one of their clients to say hey Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we appreciate you um, and your your business this last year. We look forward to serving you again this coming year. And in that, 
letter, then we listed out all the documents that they're going to need. Maybe they need some of them, maybe they don't. But again, this is just kind of a blanket mass document that we can then upload into a certain uh, upload into that uh, shared location for the for the customer. And then from there, again, they are automatically emailed saying, hey, a document has been shared with you. Click here to log in or click here to go view that document. So they click on that document. It's going to have them log in into again a secure portal we're not emailing stuff back and forth the only email that comes is an email with a secure link in there so that they can then click which will redirect them to um, into Rubex where they log in download that document now they have that document and they can start preparing their documents to upload back to you now by them uploading back uh, uploading those uh, documents back to you now this is where the rubber meets the road now we're saving time we're saving um, communication we're allowing uh, or taking a step back and letting the software help you communicate with your customers at large and allowing them to upload documents into their secure location and uh, during all this process when they upload a document to you guess what you get an email as well saying so and so has uploaded a new document into that location so now that's your notification to say hey you know what I need to jump on this and start uh, start down this road so again mass communication is going to be key for going forward in communicating with your clients alright so if you look at this slide it's probably going to resonate with you right Time is money lost, especially if you're looking for things or if you're licking envelopes or if you're sending things out. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to peel back the curtains just a little bit so that you have the ability to see. So you're going to see what Rubex is, what the platform, what the software looks like and how easy it is to simply share that location with a customer um, and create that sharing portal. So that two way street back and forth. So that's what's coming up next and uh, yeah check this out alright so this is just a quick window inside of uh, what Rubex looks like so down the left hand side here this is how we organize things uh, we organize things in a very simple way cabinets drawers folders and subfolders now you can inundate yourself with all the, the the complexity that you want that's the beauty of what we have here but again I wanted to touch on how easy it is to share a location with an individual so I've got Bob here he's my client and uh, I want to share this location with Bob so that one I can communicate with him or send documents to him in a secure manner and two he can send things to me right that's what it's all about you can't do somebody's taxes without their w-2 and or their 1099 or whatever it is and so making sure that we have a safe and secure way to do that is what Rubix offers so I can simply right click on this location come down here to share it's gonna open up a dialog box where all I have to do is type in their email address change the subject line to whatever I want it to be and then down here is a quick message saying Mr. Customer just so you know this is a new way that we're gonna be sending and receiving documents going into this tax season now down here under these uh, advanced permissions I can actually give them the ability to write or upload back into this location again this sharing location is a folder and so I want them to be able to upload into it so that's all I'm gonna do I'm gonna give them write permission I'm gonna put in their email address and then once I click share now Bob has access into the program he can upload his documents into this sharing location so that he can get information back and forth to to you and you can send information to him so now we're we're taken out having to encrypt emails password protect emails those types of things that sometimes can be a little daunting when you have to do it a hundred times a day just simply drag and drop the document into that shared location and we take care of the rest we'll email them giving them giving the client the hyperlink to be able to log in and download the document that you just uploaded all right one of the awesome features that we have built into the Rubix platform is we do have a workflow component so what is workflow well you have those processes inside of your organization that when a specific document comes in it needs to follow a route or maybe it's an expense report right 
Somebody needs to sign off on it. So depending on what that document is, we can set up a flow, if you will, so that it will go from uh, point A to point B, from point B to point C. And then in the meantime, if we need to have somebody sign off on that or approve it, we can set that up inside the workflow to help you with that. Again, this is all about automating your workday so that when documents come in, things don't get lost in the shuffle. Tax time is a busy time of year. I don't need to tell you that. You know that. But making sure that you're organized to be able to tackle it, that's something that can really benefit you. So um, I'm going to show you how just a real quick example workflow can help you when somebody just happens to stop by the office and drop a document off. All right, so the example I wanted to give is when somebody stops by the office and says, hey, I need you to get this to Billy. Well, probably right now what's going to happen is that paper gets put into a basket named Billy or Sue or Steve, you know, and then the accountant may or may not come up and grab it because they're neck deep in uh, other returns and you know, before you know it, now it comes time for the accountant to need that document and some way, somehow, those documents are gone. And you have to call the client again and say, hey, Mr. Client, can you bring bring that document back to me or email it to me? And now we're going in that rat race of, okay, they already dropped the document off and I'm sure none of you have ever had a, a, a document go missing, right? Am I right? Hello, is this thing on? No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, so what we do with the workflow again is we're creating a process to say, hey, let's have you upload a document. When that document comes in, it go, you know, they're going to stop by the front desk. Uh, who's ever worked in the front desk, uh, you know, part of their process now is to upload that document, tag it with some metadata or some profile information, and then based on that information, now one, okay, the document has been scanned. It is in the software now. Number two, we've associated some profile information and we've tagged it to a particular accountant. Now, three, that accountant just received an email saying, hey, this is something in your box. You need to take a look at it. Um, and so when they're ready to get a hold of that individual's document, again, they can go right into the workflow. The document is there. They can take that document and pick up where they left off on the return. So again, it's all about making sure, one, we're not losing documents making sure the documents are going to the right place to the right person. And by using workflow, again, we're empowering you to say, hey, this is our process. This is what we need to follow. We're going to go by this and we're going to make life just a little bit easier going into this next tax season. Now here at eFile Cabinet, we use templates in a manner of different ways. Um, workflow template, I just showed you kind of one of those. Uh, we talked about uh, templates when it comes to mass sharing. Um, there's some zonal templates that we're going to talk about here in just a minute, but the one I want to key in on, and this is one that really I feel differentiates us from the others, is being able to create a standard, a standard folder structure for all your clients. So it doesn't matter where the client came from, when they started uh, using your services or whatnot, everybody has the same layout, the same folder structure. Um, that way you don't have, you know, stuff being stored in one location versus another. Everything is going to be in one spot. Every document has a home for it to go to. That way, when you do get into the busy time and you're like, oh man, I need to bring in, you know, somebody from the outside to help me s at least scan and store documents. Well, they're not going to be coming to you every 10 minutes saying, hey, where do I put this document? What do I do with this document? There's going to be a place. There's going to be a home. And then when it comes to the next year, well, I'll show you here in just a second how easy it is to create that folder structure and then apply it. And then I'll show you a little trick when it comes to mass communication again. So stay tuned. All right, I'm going to show you a little secret here. So if you notice, I added Bob over here and uh, earlier. And when I added Bob, it created you know this location, these this set of folder structures. Well, again, one of the cool things that we have built into the program is a little bit of automation where we can apply specific templates. We can start work start workflows like we just talked about on specific locations. We can do a, a bunch of cool things with automation um, right out of the gate so that 
when you're in the, the thick of tax season and you ha have a referral from one of your clients and you go in there and you create their location, well, you can set it up so that when you create a new drawer for your client, for this new client, it automatically drops in the folder structure so you don't have to recreate the wheel. It's there. Now, I want to show you this, and this is one of the cool things that we built in with templates. So we have 2020. That's the tax year we're going into. But if you notice, it's kind of an empty shell. And if we look at 2019, we've got completed tax and source documents. So what I'm going to do is inside, as, uh, as an admin, you can go inside templates, and we're going to go into the, the functionality of it, and we're going to add those two folders. Again, we had completed tax and we have source documents. Now, this is one of those things that, again, um, if you're not, if, if you're kind of scratching your head saying, man, you know, I want to get things organized or I don't know if I, you know, want to take the time to get them organized. Well, let me tell you, this is going to be a game changer for you um, because once you get things organized and you get things set up in a way that is digestible, um, if you will, um, now you can really make things hum okay so now I've just added these two folders now again um, they didn't exist prior so what we've done is we have built in this sync changes button down here at the bottom where all I do is simply click that it's gonna ask are you sure you want to make those changes obviously I do and now boom I get the green light those things have been updated because anywhere where I have applied this template it's gonna now add these two folders underneath 2020 so we're just going to do a quick refresh here and we're going to jump back to the main screen we're going to open up our good friend Bob here and now if you notice 2020 is filled in and if I expand that out again there's those two new folders if I come down here to Brett again I didn't tell you about Brett but he got those same two folders I didn't have to go one by one or cabinet by cabinet or drawer by drawer or folder by folder to add those things I use the power of the software to create the structure. So again, I'm taking that time out and giving it back to you to say, hey, everything's already been created. Go ahead and just store that document where it needs to go. Now, here's a little tidbit. When we first started talking, um, we talked about sharing and mass communicating. Well, one of the neat things that we can do with templates is we have this sharing location. Again, you've created it. You've associated a guest user with it. You've put in their email address. One of the cool things that we can do inside of a template is when we get to a template or get to the template and we have this location again called sharing, I have the ability to upload that generic letter that we talked about that I shared that story with you about, upload into this location, I hit sync changes and guess what? You just mass communicated with all of your clients that you have uh, a sharing location that you've taken the time with and set up their email address. Now they're getting an email saying, hey, you just got a doc a document was just shared with you, log in and view it. So now you're getting the engagement from your customers. They're logging in, they're downloading that document and you just, again, you might be a large firm, you might be a small firm, you might be, you know, a single operator, you might be, there might be 20 of you in the office. You could have 100 clients or you could have 1,000 clients. And by doing the, what I just showed, now you've emailed all of those people with one click. Pretty cool. So again, if this is something that uh, you're like, oh man, I got to have that, please. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll give you some information on how to get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We want to show you these things, talk through your process and how you're doing things, and see if we can't help you. All right, so the last thing that we want to cover today, and again, we appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully, you've learned a couple things and uh, maybe created some interest. Like I said, please, at the end, we're going to give you some information on how to reach out to us. Give us a call. Uh, shoot us an email. We want to hear from you. But the last piece we want to talk about is Zonal OCR. Now, what is Zonal OCR? This is uh, a program that we have uh, that you can take a form, one of those forms that you're constantly using or scanning over and over and over and over. The form doesn't change, but maybe the information on the form changes. And what we can do is we can take that information in those fields, depending on what you want, whether it's a social security number, a birth date, a first name, a last name, an address. Um, we can take those key pieces of information um, when the form is 
when the form is scanned, we grab those pieces of information, we capture them as profile or metadata information, and then based on that, we actually tell the document where to go and how to get there. Kind of like an air traffic controller, but for your documents. So you can scan that document, whether it's an output of a finished tax return. You know, that first page is usually a letter to the client. Okay, perfect. We're going to use that in, as an example here in just a minute, where it's not only going to store the document, but it's going to create uh, a location for that client because they don't exist. It was a new client. Um, they kind of came in through a different way, and so it's going to create some stuff and then store the document. Uh, if they are already created, it's just going to find the location where it needs to go, and then it's going to be stored there. So if in a year from now or two years from now, that client says, hey, I'm looking to buy a house and I need my tax returns, and I put them in a box and stuck them in a storage unit somewhere, well, no harm, no foul. You can go right to that location, find that document, copy, paste it into that shared location, and now they have a copy of it. So it is a great way, again, to take some of that automation and that redundant stuff that you're doing day in and day out, and we're just going to automate it a little bit. So check this out. Okay, so this is one of those outputs that comes out of your, your tax software. It's a letter to the client. This one just happens to be labeled March 8, 2018 for Bruce and Virginia Anderson. Now, probably what your normal process is, this comes out and you, you're printing a hard copy and you're printing a digital copy and you're dragging and dropping it to a location. In the meantime, you've got 10 others right behind it that you need to do. So with Zonal, we're going to pick up on those, like uh, you can see it, the boxes are kind of um, marked there to say, hey, these are the two things that we're going to um, key off of. And based on those pieces of information, not only are we going to store the document, but if Bruce and Virginia Anderson don't already exist, we're going to create that location then for you. And then based on where they drop, again, that automation then kicks in and creates some folder structure. But at the end of the day, you've now taken this document, put it through the process of Zonal OCR, and now the output is it's already filed. It's put away. You don't need to worry about it. It landed where you wanted it to go. And if we flip over here to the, uh, we'll just make this big here for you. You'll notice, check that out, Bruce and Virginia Anderson. There it is. We come in here to 2019. second 2019 and there's that document it's just because that's where I had it routed um, to end up dropping into and if you'll notice we'll have that first page there and this is the letter that was originally done so again using zonal OCR is going to help you be able to drop basically a document that you've created a template on grabs those fields and then drops it into the location that you determined before all this happens and that way, again, you're taking the guesswork out of where does this document need to go? And it puts it right where you need it to go. Thank you, Jim, for sharing a few important ways our listeners can dominate this tax season by utilizing e-file cabinet document management solutions. Now we'd like to introduce Carlos Lopez and Tony Martinez, who will help you learn how Latino Tax Pro can help you grow your business. Thank you, Jesse. Hi, I'm Carlos Lopez, CEO of Latino Tax Pro. We're proud to announce a new partnership with eFile Cabinet to provide new, exciting resources and learning opportunities for tax professionals. These will include online training and tools to keep tax professionals ahead of the game, along with special offers. To kick off our partnership, eFile Cabinet will be participating in our National Learning Week January 6th through the 9th. Keep an eye out for more information. Latino Tax Pro provides training and learning opportunities by top tax and accounting industry experts through our educational platforms and access to help and guide through our membership, Ask a Tax Pro portal. We offer live and online training in both English and Spanish. Our mission is to help tax and accounting professionals serve the ever-growing Latino market. Our vision is to create a community of tax experts by bringing everyone together for our annual Latino Tax Fest 
in Las Vegas, Nevada. Every year, over 3,000 tax and accounting professionals and over 117 software companies come together to receive the latest tax updates and learn about the latest technologies to help them grow their business. This year, we're returning to the MGM Grand in Las Vegas from July 14th through 16th for three days of learning, networking, and fun. I hope to see you there. Now I would like to introduce Tony Martinez, who can tell you more on how Latino Tax Pro can help you grow your business. Awesome, thanks Mr. Lopez. Hi everyone, we are gonna dive right in to let you know what we do and how we can help you out. So follow along with us. So first of all, what do all taxpayers look for? So Mr. Lopez, in your experience working with taxpayers for decades now, how, how long have you been in the industry? I started in uh, late 1982, Tony. 82, yeah, I was before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So from the beginning, has there been a similar trend of what taxpayers have looked for? Has that changed over the years? No, it hasn't. As a matter of fact, we've sent out several surveys year after year to find out what do our uh, clients want from us. And we've discovered through the years what clients want is the same trained tax professional year after year. Clients don't want to come into an office and be surprised by a newbie. Mm. And even if it's someone that has years of experience to the tax pro and to the tax uh, payer, it's somebody new. Yeah, yeah, because it's new to them, right? New to them. Yeah, I know talking to some clients, uh, what, what they've told me is, you know, they, they go, they have that relationship. They, that tax professional knows their story. So if they get somebody new, even if it's somebody with a lot of experience, they have to retell their story, their financial yes. history, their financial story. <laughs> right. And so I could see that being not the best optimal experience where they have to like, oh, okay, let me go again. And then if you are a, a tax firm that goes through all these new employees, that may not be good for the brand either. Exactly. Because what happens is your clients want consistency, just like you want consistency in your life. So in their lives, they're coming into someone that they're going to bear their soul to it's someone that needs to understand what they've been through. And it's just a very important experience to taxpayers and to your clients to have the same tax prepare year after year. And a lot of tax business owners don't understand that or they haven't quite grasped how, to, how do you retain the same prepare year after year. Yeah. yeah, and what we at Latino Tax Pro strive for is to teach the tax business owner how to do that. Yeah, and that segues next to the next part of our conversation. So how do you keep that tax professional? So what I've seen in my experience is training is the best way to keep them. Has that been the case from the beginning? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, that's how we started our growth was in the year 2000, we decided to expand our company. And we knew uh, the only way we could do that was to train our own employees. Because up until then, we sent them to another place, a big box chain, to get training. And then they would come back to the office and then we would retrain them, yeah. uh, mostly how to do things our way and also in bilingual Spanish. Oh, yeah. Because even back then, we identified the emerging market was Spanish speaking taxpayers. Now, of course, it's a whole immigrant market. That's the new growing market. But still, Spanish speaking taxpayers um, constitute about 65% of the immigrant market, which is about 34 to 50 million taxpayers. That's a big chunk. So that's one out of six. So that's a lot. That's a big market. Yeah. And so when somebody, so somebody comes in tomorrow, let's say, and they say, Hey, tax season is coming. I want to work for Lopez tax service. Do we just give them an application and hire them? Or what's that process that we do here at Lopez tax? Service? We're very particular about who we hire. 
So if you come in here and say, we want to work for you, the first thing we'll tell them is here, fill out this application. Now sign up for our tax school, mm. take the tax school. And then during the tax school, we call it the 30 hour interview. We'll find out if you're engaged. We'll find out if you come to work on time, if you're doing the online work, if you're networking with others, because we want someone who's friendly, someone who's bright, and someone who knows how to follow instructions. Yeah, and that's the best way to filter them out is during the training that we offer them, we could see if they're helping others, if yes. they show up to class on time. Because mm -hmm. I've seen the, I, um, examples where you may have somebody real bright, does all the homework, excels in the course, yet they're not very helpful to others. They kind of stick to themselves or they are maybe even have a big ego. So we must ask ourselves, even though they're bright, do we want them in front of our clients? Exactly. Remember, our employees are the front line. They mm -hmm. represent the company. So we have to train them to uh, reflect what we believe, our culture, our goals, our ethics. And then we have to make sure that they can uh, be friendly to people. Even when you answer the phone, answer with a smile. Yeah, people can tell. They can tell. Indeed. So the next slide here goes into what happens if you don't have time to train and then you really, it's last minute. Um, is there something that is available on demand or online? Yes. We've learned through the years that having a brick and mortar store is great, but you're limited. You're limited to the number of people that can come into your office you're limited to the uh, hours that you can offer the training, you know, uh, weekends, evenings. So we have developed in the last two years an online virtual training center. So you can, you don't have time to train, Tony. Let's say you own a tax service. You go, oh, Mr. Lopez, you know, I'm so busy. I'm getting ready. I've got corporations, other things, but I need to hire some people, even some receptionists. And then we tell you, you know what, Tony, you don't have to train anyone until they come into your office. And the way you do that is with our online virtual training center. Your prospective employees can watch a video, take a quiz, pass the quiz with 70%, and then move on to the next segment. Each segment's about five to seven minutes long. And then this way, you go onto your dashboard and you can see what segments they finished, what percentage they got on each one, how many times do they have to retake a segment? So you can see from your dashboard how well your students are doing. Yeah. So you take control of the training for your office and for your team, as opposed to sending them off to somewhere else and hope that they get the training that they need. Exactly, or sit there in your office thinking that people are gonna come by and wanna work for you let me tell you, that's about the worst thing you could do. And people are always asking me, where do you find students? How do you find these people to come in here? And I, I love to say, I've never spent a dime on advertising for students. They go, how do you get them? Simple, market your current client base. Your clients already trust you with their taxes. Why wouldn't they trust you with a part-time job? So we send out postcards to everyone who signed up and wanted an interest in working for us or just learning about taxes. And that's where we get our students. Yeah, I noticed that the offices uh, at Lopez Tax, we have posters above the, 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 the wall of the lobbies and people do ask, hey, what is this tax class? When do you start? My cousin was looking for a job or exactly. my mother-in-law or yeah. my brother. So no, that makes sense. That way we get to control the training ourselves. Yeah, that's right. So and since we have six offices, retail mm -hmm. offices, plus we do prepare taxes at our Latino Tax Pro headquarters, well, we have to um, retrain all of our managers every year to make sure they get the latest updates and then to also show uh, clients we offer tax training. Because right. we often have people telling us, well, I'll start next year. Well, that's a year too late. Start now. Start yeah. today. Put your posters up now. That makes sense because let's say you, so first of all, I'm a big believer that everyone should have a tax school 
because that way you could train people your way, recruit new employees. Now, if you're looking to start a tax school, start training, you're right. Even if you're looking to start next September, now's the time to put up those posters right. because tax season, you have an <laughs> influx of all these people walking into your office. So start creating awareness. So then in May, you may have 10 or 20 people interested because they're taking uh, through the contact cards, their information. Yeah. And then in June, you start, you call us, we get you the materials and you start planning the year. So exactly. you got to start because the longer the runway, the smoother the takeoff. Exactly. And not only that, Tony, but you create a pipeline of mm -hmm. qualified tax pros. So that in case someone can't work for you for whatever reason, the family reasons or uh, some other reason that's unforeseen, you've got someone there in the, you know, on the sidelines waiting to come in. Yeah, you know, and that kind of leads to my next question. This industry is very seasonal, all right? Um, how does, how has that affected um, the business model that you needed to create at Lopez Tax Service? You need to adjust and account for the fact that the seasonal business. Exactly. So since day one, uh, I first started working in a CPA firm. And right away I saw what the owners did for that company. And that is offer bookkeeping mm -hmm. and other accounting services during the year, bring in business clients and prepare business returns. Okay. Then when you prepare those business returns, you're going to have their employees come in family members, mm -hmm. uh, it, just, it just creates a whole synergy of business that's year round. Yeah, that makes sense. And that way you keep everybody employed because yeah. your team, yes. they need to do something after April and that's it's a right. recurring revenue stream. Yes. No, oh, perfect. So our next part is what happens if you get stuck with a tough tax question? Let's say you are a, a tax business owner, you have three or four employees, you've trained them, you have them in your office, it's February, a client comes in with a new form. They come in maybe with a 1042S or an IRS letter or something that is weird. Um, and you as a tax business owner, you review it, you're not sure, you call the IRS, you're gonna be on the phone for hours. Uh, what do you recommend to somebody? And that that was one thing that uh, for years uh, I wanted to solve. And now with technology today, mm -hmm. we have developed what's called Ask a Tax Pro. It's a uh, low cost solution. So let's say somebody from Myra's tax service, somebody comes in with a 1042S. Myra looks at it, she shows her employees, everybody shrugs their shoulders. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, you know what? We signed up for this service at Latino Tax Pro called Ask a Tax Pro. So let's send it to them. So you scan it, upload it to the portal, and then within 24 to 48 hours or sooner, mm -hmm. one of our uh, enrolled agents will send back an answer to the portal and tell you what that 1042S is. And then, of course, you explain to your client, you know what, I am going to get some experts to answer this question to make sure I give you the right answer. So don't, don't hesitate to tell your clients, I'm going to do research to make sure you get the right answer, the right treatment to this tax situation. They'll respect you for it mm -hmm. instead of you trying to BS your way around the answer. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, the clients are not dumb. They're right? not dumb. They know when you're like, you're making yeah. up stuff. And, and, and if you yeah. let them know, you know, that, that's, let me do, I like using the term double check. Double check. Let me double check this, do some research with the rest of my team. Yes. And then you use the Yes Tax Pro portal to reach um, our enrolled agents and yes. then at least get some further guidance. Because, I mean, we are as, as smart as us, we are, as you are as a tax professional, there's always much to learn. And having the ability to research is the real skill. Nobody, That's the real skill. Yeah, nobody knows everything, right? But yeah. having that ability to research either on your own or through a partnership like Ask a Tax Pro, that's where the clients will respect you. You're exactly right. Learn how to research. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so we, we encourage you to look into that. Ask a Tax Pro, we're here to help. And let's dive a little bit more into offering more services. I know at Lopez Tax, we do payroll and sales tax and, mm -hmm. and bookkeeping. Um, how does that work out? For yes. Well, you know, uh, I've had the IRS ask me several times. Uh, we're members of the Stakeholder Liaison. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So we meet with the IRS executives that report right to the commissioner 10 times a year. And it's really a place where we can learn, we can share our experiences. And when we go to these meetings and people say, well, you know, uh, how do you guys know so much? Well, what we do is we offer other services during the year, which includes us going to these stakeholder meetings, getting this information, coming back and sending out emails. Uh, there's plenty of free email services out there, uh, Constant Contact. Um, it's called MailChimp. MailChimp. And so that's one thing to do is uh, a service that you can send out every week or every month to all of your client base is an update. Yeah. And include coupons on it. Okay. Then offer bookkeeping because bookkeeping will bring in those bigger tax returns. Mm -hmm. Offer payroll. And you don't have to do the payroll yourself. There's plenty of companies out there that offer payroll. Seems like the market's crowded now. Yeah. Gusto, excuse me, ADP. Um, paychecks. Paychecks. I mean, there's a bunch of them out there now. Take that, uh, mitigate that risk of making a mistake to one of these guys. It's not that much. Uh, and uh, you can add, add on to it. Also, sales tax. There's plenty of companies. Avalara is one of them. They're really good. Uh, uh, and then make sure that when you're doing your bookkeeping, that you take a quality bookkeeping course because you want to learn how to do it right. So uh, at Latino Tax Pro, we are tax and bookkeeping training experts. Mm -hmm. So we do have an excellent bookkeeping uh, bundle that you can look into. Otherwise, I recommend, we recommend going to your local uh, community college and take a bookkeeping course. Yeah. And yeah. learn it. Because yeah, I, I did know, I do have noticed that when you serve business clients, that means there's more services to offer. It's more complex tax returns. You help them incorporate. Yeah. They may have payroll needs, sales tax needs. That accounting is key. The bookkeeping is key to give them correct financials because when they go try to access capital and if their financials are not in order they're not going to get that loan they're not going to get that capital that they need to grow their business exactly and also you want to make sure that your balance sheet is balanced and that you are more than just a bookkeeper to your client you're a financial advisor because uh, business clients are way more faithful than individual clients who are out there shopping your business client wants you they can trust you to be your, their, your tax and bookkeeping advisor. They will be more faithful to you. Yeah, indeed. And I have noticed a more of a need when we are working with the Latino and immigrant market. It looks like there's a, a big need for financial literacy, for financial education topics, things of like, what is a balance sheet? Um, you need to report all your income. I notice sometimes that comes up um, and classifying your workforce properly is another big issue. But I noticed that these challenges are also opportunities because if you can fill these needs, then you can become the hero and you can monetize it along the way. So could we cover a little bit about the emerging Latino immigrant market? What, what, what does it take for somebody to serve that market? Yes, <clears throat> well, you know, the reason I started in this business uh, was first of all, I was fascinated with taxes. And then in 1986, President Reagan had an amnesty for agricultural field workers. So I knew in Salinas alone, we were going to have 40,000 more tax returns to prepare because we had to prepare two years uh, in arrears plus the current year. Mm -hmm. So I asked my boss if we could do this. He says, well, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, and if you leave, what am I going to do with all these clients? And so I said, well, then make me a partner. And he said, well, I want somebody else to be a partner. So, okay, look, you know what? Let's part friends. Yeah. Yeah. And remember that, always part friends. And so we parted ways. And then I jumped into that uh, Spanish-speaking field worker business. Well, nowadays, let's go ahead about 35 years, 36 years. And look. We've had 500,000 immigrants come into this country since August of last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have 
uh, the government estimates there's 54 million to 60 million immigrants in this country. How do you handle that? They came here not to collect welfare, not to collect food stamps, not to get free medical care. They came here for one thing, get a job and get the American dream. Okay. So like I like to tell people, we did not bring them here, but we're going to make sure they prepare their taxes the right way. <clears throat> so following the immigrant market is where growth is now, but I don't speak their language. I don't speak Farsi. I don't speak, you know, um, other languages. I don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I, how do I get into that market? Well, it's very easy. The largest market, which is 65 to 74% is Spanish speaking. Okay. All of our materials are bilingual Spanish and they can all be done online. So if you want to hire Spanish speaking clients, Spanish speaking prepares to attract the Spanish speaking clients. Start with a bilingual training system from a qualified bilingual program that you can trust and you know is here to stay. Yeah, I mean, indeed, and our experience, um, not only with Latino Tax Pro, reaching over 10,000 of these tax and accounting professionals across the country, but with Lopez Tax Service here. Um, at a regional level. How many clients do we have at Lopez Tax Service? Yeah, we prepare almost 10,000 tax, tax returns return. a year. Yeah. We have six offices. So, so that experience, that's amazing. So that experience at the taxpayer level and at the tax professional level allows us to have our, our, our finger on, on the pulse yes. yeah, of, of what's happening at the ground level. So we take a lot of these topics to, to DC when we speak with the IRS or provide feedback we always have to stay on top of the ever-changing uh, laws, including the most recent one right now, the, the, the DACA issue, it may be rescinded. If DACA gets rescinded, thousands of individuals will no longer have a work permit. So if they walk into your office, you better check if their permit is expired because it could have serious tax implications. So it's ever-changing, so we want to be on top of it. That's sure. right. And the thing too that a lot of people are missing out on is a qualified business income deduction. Yes. The IRS was expecting 21 million tax returns with this 20% deduction on it. I think it's great, especially for small business owners, but they only receive 15 million. So we're the, what happens to the other 6 million? We believe that there are tax pros that are unwilling to figure out this new deduction because they're afraid of it. Yeah, they don't and understand they it. Don't right? under, and they're afraid of it because they don't understand it. But we have several courses coming up very soon mm -hmm. with all the new changes because there were new uh, guidance and new regulations this year. So we're going to have, and we're working on it, we're going to launch it very soon, updates on the QBI Qualified Business Income Deduction. Yeah, Form 8825. That's a brand new form, Tony. Just for the QBI, 8825. No, I fill that out line by line. Line by line, right. Yeah, awesome. Exciting um, changes, exciting things. And again, we want to invite you guys to Latino Tax Fest. If you're interested in serving the market, uh, understanding how to recruit those uh, bilingual, bicultural tax professionals, give us a call, 866-936-2587. Uh, Join us in Vegas in July, as we will be amongst 3,000 uh, like-minded individuals serving the market. And some of the best conversations happen like on the, at the coffee line or grabbing a quick bite in between classes, because you run into somebody from a completely different state but that happens to serve the same type of clients. Yes. So you yeah. exchange ideas, tips, and maybe have some fun along the way. Yeah, and who knows? You may run into the commissioner of the IRS and say, hey, Chuck, how you doing? Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so we love it. So thank you very much. And again, we're excited to partner with EFAO Cabinet. There is more to come. And our goal in this new partnership is to bring value to you as a tax and accounting professional, automate your office, grow your business, and get the latest tax information you need to better serve your clients. So. Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Carlos and Tony. E-File Cabinet is proud to partner with the tax professionals at Latino Tax Pro to offer the very best solutions in document management and tax, bookkeeper, and accounting training and services that help you efficiently operate and grow your business. 
Thanks to all our listeners for joining with us today. Please visit our landing page displayed here for more information on how to take advantage of our partnership offering and dominate this tax season. Thanks for watching.